Hello and welcome to Tensile Ground Coffee, a few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy it while having your coffee. While continuing on with the Ask Andrew season, had another question just in. It's from Sandy, Sandy Gravel, and she asks, how do you calculate the tyre contact area beneath the vehicle? Interesting. That's quite fundamental in uh, any sort of road design, is what is the pressure that's being applied by the tires of a vehicle over what area to the road surface. So we're at the uh, Engineer Research and Development Center at the US Army Corps of Engineers in Vicksburg, Mississippi, where they've got lots of trucks like this uh, lying around that, I can, uh, that can help us to talk about this issue a bit. And it's also something that we looked at uh, during a, a trial of an unpaved road here that we did some months ago. So that particular truck isn't here now, but we can use this truck here. These two wheels are on hard standing. This is uh, some sort of uh, concrete hard standing here. The rule of thumb is that the tire inflation pressure equals the contact pressure. And from the load of the wheel, you can calculate what the area is. That works reasonably well on a, on a hard standing. Sometimes the, the pressure is a little bit higher because some of the the load goes through the tire carcass as well, so there are equations to take it, that into account. Tire pressures on a lot of trucks uh, are getting, have got higher in recent years, maybe six, seven, uh, hundred kilopascals. So that would be the sort of uh, approximate contact pressure on hard standing. But what about on an unpaved road, so on an unbound granular material such as this? There are some design methods that take the same approach, even on an unpaved road. But if you think about it, a pressure of about 700 kilopascals is much too high for an unbound granular material to support. It would actually yield. It's about double the bearing capacity, the surface bearing capacity of this material. So that's something we wanted to look at. So we did a trial uh, in, in, the, in the hangar over there using a loaded... Uh, truck, a specific truck where we could change the loading and we could also change the tire pressure. And we drove it onto an unbound aggregate, onto sheets of brown paper, sprayed paint around the uh, underneath of the tire and that revealed the contact area. So we found that the contact area equals the width of the tire, that doesn't change, but what changes is the contact length. And you can see the contact length from about here to here in this case. And we found that it didn't change very much with the tire pressure. It changed more with the load. It's because the tire pressure exceeded the, uh, the bearing capacity of the aggregate. So the, the contact pressure, the contact area increased as the aggregate yielded until the, the, the pressure was low enough for the, uh, the aggregate to support it. So by dividing the load from the tire by the contact area that we measured by the spray paint, we determined that the contact pressure was about half the tire pressure in some cases. So it shows that that approximation of tire inflation pressure equals the contact pressure on an unbound surface isn't, isn't uh, really that accurate. It can be 100% out. So in, the, in a new uh, unpaved rose design method, in the LAMS method that we've developed, we have uh, a new way of calculating the contact area and the contact stress based on calculating the, the yield stress in the aggregate for those occasions where the tire inflation pressure is bigger than the bearing capacity of the unbound aggregate. So I hope that answers your question, Sandy. Uh, that's all for this episode of Tensile Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.